What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will talk about resampling. You may have heard of the term resampling before. Even if you haven't, you might have used it in statistical analysis or predictive modeling. In this video, we will cover topics such as what is resampling and why we need resampling. Also, we will introduce two resampling methods, bootstrapping and the permutation tests. Finally, we will compare these two methods. Our goal for this video is to understand what they are, and I will try my best to explain them as intuitively as possible. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's first recap what is sample and what is sampling. We talked about both concepts in a previous video on sampling. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend watching it first before diving into this video. All right, guys, let's go back to this video. A sample is a subset of the population. Sampling is the selection of a subset of units from within a population to estimate the characteristics of the whole population. Resampling consists in sampling a sample. The result is a sample of the original sample. So in resampling, the original sample is considered as the population. Resampling is a non-parametric method. So why do we need resampling? Why is it useful at all? Suppose we are interested in estimating the properties of a population or in comparing two populations. We have sampled our populations by conducting an experiment or an observational study, and we have estimated statistics of interest such as the mean using the sample mean. In a single population case, we would like to estimate the variability in our sample statistic by computing the variance of its distribution or a countless interval. In the two population case, we'd like to test whether the means of the two populations are equal. If it made sense to introduce assumptions on the distribution of the data, such as normality of the sample points, or if it was easy to collect new data from the population, i.e. sample the true population again, then we would use techniques such as t-test, z-test, and countless intervals in parametric statistics. When the normality assumption does not hold, and we are not able to collect more data from the population, we will use resampling. For instance, the data is collected by running an experiment. The cost, such as time and money, of collecting new data may be too high. For instance, in a marketing campaign, a company issued coupons to customers to promote a specific product. After the campaign is over and the coupons are expired, it's hard to generate new data points about customers' behavior. In observational study, we may not know when we will next be able to observe new data points. For example, when the sample points are astronomical phenomena. In reality, there are many cases you may not have the whole population to sample from anymore. To solve these problems, we will simply sample our first sample again enough times to estimate the sample statistic distribution. This is resampling. We can then compute the variance of this distribution or its quantiles to estimate the variability and compute countless intervals and p-values. One of our main underlying assumptions when using resampling is that sample statistics are good enough approximations of the population statistics that we may resample to estimate the standard errors. For example, if we are interested in the mean, we are assuming that the standard deviation of the sample means is approximately equal to the standard deviation of the mean obtained by resampling. Okay, now you know why resampling is useful. Let's discuss some common use resampling methods. There's a variety of resampling methods and we'll focus on the two common use ones in practice, bootstrapping and the permutation tests. The first method is bootstrapping. It is used for estimating the precision of sample statistics by drawing randomly with replacement from the original sample. The bootstrap method uses the given sample to create a new distribution called the bootstrap distribution that approximates the sampling distribution for the sample mean or other statistics. The idea behind the bootstrapping is that if the original sample is a representative of the population, then the bootstrap distribution of the mean will look approximately like the sampling distribution of the mean, that is, have roughly the same spread and shape. To find the bootstrap distribution of the mean, we draw samples of size n with replacement from the original sample and then compute the mean of each resample. These samples are called resamples or bootstrap samples. In other words, we now treat the original sample as the population. 
Note that drawing lots of bootstrap observations from the original sample is not like drawing observations from the underlying population because it does not create new data. For most statistics, bootstrap distributions approximate the spread, bias, and the shape of the actual sampling distribution. The bootstrap is not used to get better parameter estimates because the bootstrap distributions are centered around statistics calculated from the original sample rather than the unknown population variables. Instead, bootstrap sampling is useful for quantifying the behavior of a parameter estimate, such as its standard error, skewness, and bias, or for calculating confidence intervals. You may be wondering how many bootstrap samples are needed. Typically, a thousand bootstrap samples are enough for rough approximations, but more are needed for greater accuracy. The rule of thumb is to use at least 10,000 bootstrap resamples and more when accuracy matters. The other resampling method we are going to cover is the permutation test. It's a non-parametric hypothesis test. The reason it's a resampling method is that it relies on resampling the original data, assuming the null hypothesis. Based on the resampled data, it can be concluded how likely the original data is to occur under the null hypothesis. In a permutation test, two or more samples are involved. Let's look at the two sample case, as it's similar to the case of three or more groups. Let's say we have two groups, control and treatment. The null hypothesis of a permutation test is two samples come from the same distribution. If the null hypothesis is true, it means the treatment to which the groups were exposed to do not have an effect. Then all the observations are drawn from the same distribution and we can mix them up. This assumption is called exchangeability of the observations under the null hypothesis. The exchangeability assumption is weaker than assuming that the sample points are independent and identically distributed. To permute means to exchange labels on data points or change the order of a set of values. So we combine the observations from two groups, then we create a permutation resample by drawing a certain number of observations without replacement from the pooled data to be one sample. And we leave the remaining observations to be the second sample. We then calculate the statistic of interest, for example, the difference in means of the two samples. We repeat this many times, such as a thousand or more. Basically, we test the hypothesis by randomly drawing groups from this combined set and seeing how much the two samples differ from one another in each resample. To know whether to reject the null hypothesis, we reason by contradiction. If the observed mean difference from the two original samples is an unlikely realization of the sample mean difference distribution computed from all of the permutations, then the two original samples were probably not from the same distribution. The p-value is a fraction of the times the random statistic exceeds the original statistic. For example, the observed mean difference from the two original samples is 2, and we have a total of a thousand permutations. We simply count the number of sample means as or more extreme than our initial test statistic. And the p-value is a count divided by the total number of test statistics we calculated. In this case, it's 10 over 1,000. Now you understood both bootstrapping and permutation tests. Let's compare these two methods. The permutation test is used to estimate the sampling distribution for the sample mean or other statistics. We sample with replacement from the original sample. By comparison, the permutation test is used to perform a hypothesis test when we may assume that the pooled sample points are exchangeable under the null hypothesis. We sample without replacement from the pooled data. That is everything for this video. If you like this video, I have a whole playlist for you on statistics-related concepts and problems. I talk a lot about data science, data science interviews, as well as tips and strategies to help you crack data science interviews and keep your skills sharp. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get updates on future content. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!